Between the travel, end of year assignments, and the responsibilities of graduation, I'm exhausted. I mean, what's a girl gotta do to just sit down and talk LaSalle sports? Apparently a lot. But I'm back with Megan for my favorite part of the week. Hello, I'm Libby Gilliland. And I'm Megan Cooney. Lucky for you and me, I still have another year, so I have nothing better to do than to sit back and talk about LaSalle sports. You're watching LaSalle TV's Home for Explore Athletics Sportsline. Welcome to Sportsline. We may have had time off for Easter, but our Explorer Sports were hard at work. We have recaps to catch you up on and coming up. And later, it's been a while since we checked in on our intramural sports here at LaSalle. So today we have an intramural volleyball live in studio interview to talk about their experience on the team. But first, let's take a look at our Sportsline top three. Number one, three members of LaSalle's men's basketball team received Big Five honors last week. Head coach Fran Dunphy was named the Harry Litwack Coach of the Year, while Khalil Brantley won a spot on the All Big Five first team, and Josh Nickelberry earned a place on the All Big Five second team. Number two, six explorers from LaSalle's track and field program were named to the Atlantic 10 All Academic Team. In order to qualify, student athletes must maintain a GPA of 3.30 or higher. Christine L. and Liz Mancini all made the cut, along with Ola B.C. Adams, Finn Burney, and Liam Rivard. Number three, Teango and Bombo placed in the top five at the Dalton Ebanks invite as the sole representative for LaSalle at the meet. And Bombo finished the fifth in the 5,000 meet, finished in fifth in the 5,000 meter, finishing with a time of 14 minutes and 20.94 seconds. A lot of good, to, a lot in our top three um, mm -hmm. this week, starting back with men's basketball, one no. of our favorite things to talk about on this show. So Fran Dunphy, we've talked about him a ton. He did such a great job with this program this year. And the basketball team really exceeded expectations, so thrilled for him that he was able to get that honor. I know that guys um, backed him a lot this year, and we're really thrilled to have him, and we hope that he is back next year. And then we've got Khalil Brantley and Josh Nickelberry, two of our favorite basketball players <laughs> who have also been honored and very well deserved for their incredible performance this season. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, uh, Fran Dumphy absolutely exceeded expectations. We had a really good playoff run, and I'm really excited to see Khalil Brantley getting recognized. He's a sophomore. He's got a lot of potential. It's a lot of fresh talent. Um, so I hope he can continue that run into next season. Yeah, absolutely. And track and field is back in our top three, four. I don't even know what week in a row. They're always um, performing so well. But this time, a lot of it was GPA based. And we say this a lot that it's very tough to be a student athlete. You have to work really, really hard on your sport and also maintain your grades, which is not an easy thing to do. So for them to perform this well and keep their grades up is really impressive. So hats off to track and field. And that is it for our top three. Now let's see how our teams did in this week's recaps. Rowing headed onto the Schuylkill River for the Murphy Cup, where they won medals for the second year in a row. The Explorer's second Varsity 8-plus boat, Coxswain by Elizabeth Boyle, took gold in the men's collegiate 2V, beating rivals Temple by 2.78 seconds. Then the Explorers Varsity 8 plus boat, Coxswain by Trevor Fawcett, earned a silver medal in the men's collegiate. On the women's side, the Explorers Varsity 8 plus boat, Coxswain by Marissa Paul, took silver in the 1v8 event. LaSalle's second Varsity 8 plus and 4 plus boats also competed, with the 2v8 Coxswain by Arya Singh earning bronze and the Varsity 4 Plus crew, Coxwained by Samantha Ojeme, taking fourth place. LaSalle took on Richmond this Saturday in a fierce conference matchup. The Explorers got on the board early with a free position goal from Elena Lathan. Richmond, however, then proceeded to go on a 4-0 run. Lathan responded with her second goal of the game after a one-on-one -on -one matchup with the goalie. She then went on to score her third goal of the game for a first half hat trick, cutting the Spiders' lead to one. It wasn't enough, however, with Richmond adding two more goals, making the score 6-3 going into the second half. 
The Explorers had a rough go in the second half, with Richmond going on a 7-0 run before LaSalle added goals thanks to Elena Stickney, Mackenzie Click, and Katie Johnson, adding one goal each. This wasn't enough, however, and LaSalle fell to the Spiders 6-18. Men's golf competed in two local events this week. The first was the Columbia Spring Invitational. The Explorers competed, completed the 36-hole event in 10th place. Freshman Anthony Garcia led the team, finishing 11th on the individual leaderboard with an overall score of 4 over. Alex Geekis ended the event in the top 30 with a score of 7 over. The Explorers also counted scores from seniors Nikita Romanov and Carson Rush with scores of 12 over. Their next event was the Wildcat Invitational hosted by Villanova. Day one of the event had the Explorers play 27 holes. Anthony Garcia was tied for first after 18 holes, shooting a six under par, 65. He was five under at the end of 27 holes, and his teammates Romanov, Leiden, and Gikas were all in the top 30 heading into day two. After completing the final nine holes, Garcia found himself in second place with a total score of three under par. Romanov finished in the top 10 and shot even par for the weekend. Leiden and Geekis finished in the event 18th and 29th respectively. Their team score was good enough for second place overall. Only two strokes behind Villanova who won the event. Last Friday, water polo took on Mount St. Mary's. In the first period, Mount St. Mary's jumped to a one goal lead, but LaSalle responded with two goals of their own to take the lead at the end of the period. Mount St. Mary's would go on a two-goal run to take back the lead, 3-2, to two, going into the second period. At the start of the second frame, the Mountaineers would score back-to-back -back goals, while Madeline Coper would cut the deficit to two in the second half. LaSalle would put up two more goals, but it wouldn't be enough, and LaSalle would lose 20-8. to eight. The next day, they were matched up against St. Francis Brooklyn. The Explorers started off strong with a 5-0 lead. In the second frame, LaSalle added three more goals, taking an 8-1 lead into the second half. St. Francis Brooklyn came back holding a 2-1 edge over LaSalle, but they were still trailing behind 9-3. The Explorers in the fourth period would have a 4-1 edge over the Terriers, and that would be enough for the 13-4 LaSalle victory. Women's golf kicked off their season at the Prospect Bay Intercollegiate in Maryland last week. Junior Kaylee Zeman led the team with a score of 79. Close behind her was Hannah Bosler and Nina Okunkova, who shot 81 and 82 respectively. Sophomore Paige Sermonaro closed out day one, scoring for LaSalle with an 85. On day two, the Explorers fought through tough conditions with heavy rain and wind. Bosler led the team on Sunday with a score of 85, and the Explorers took scores from Okinkova, Zeman, and Sermonaro to close out the event. So I want to take a second and talk about lacrosse, which mm -hmm. is a sport that we've been covering for a while but haven't talked a ton about um, as they've gone through the season. They have not yet won a game, and we want to talk a, a little bit about why, because we see so much talent in this team, but something just feels a little bit off, Megan. Yeah, I agree. I think that when you look at their individual talent, they have a lot of it, and it's their... I want to like kind of point out how difficult it is to score a goal in lacrosse. I used to play lacrosse in high school and I feel like it is really, you are up against so many defenders. It is such a very hard sport to play. And I feel like they do have a lot of individual talent. They have a lot of fresh talent too. And I really want to commend Mackenzie Click on getting that hat trick in that last game on Saturday. That's a hard thing to do. And not only get a hat trick, but to get it in the first half of the game is absolutely phenomenal. And I don't think, like you said, it's an individual problem. It might just be a team trying to synchronize it all together to have it come together because we saw that with men's basketball too. We would say, oh, they have a bunch of individual talent, but we weren't seeing that that camaraderie maybe or that togetherness that you look for in a team. Absolutely. You know, we've, we've seen it through the year that a lot of goals are being scored by different people. We're hearing a lot of names. And I think a lot of it goes back to the beginning of this season. They played Villanova and a lot of other ranked teams that – could have killed their confidence going into the season to play really tough opponents and you know kind of get blown out early it's good experience in one area but at the same time you have to build confidence through your team and just seemed like they never really got going after that so they have senior night coming up and a couple more games we're hoping that they can get a win and get some momentum going into the off season and going into next year and i do want to take a minute of course, for golf. Um, so the women kicked off their season this year, really, really tough conditions that they played in Maryland, but they fared pretty well. Um, 
proud of their performance and they have a tough week coming up with back-to-back -back events. They have an event in Gettysburg and then they go right into their conference tournament. So a short season, but an exciting one and hopefully they can play well because they do have a lot of talent on this team. And the men getting second overall in their last event and Anthony Garcia taking second as well individually. Incredible performance. So we are going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Elia Nash and Jonathan Colella are in studio to talk intramural volleyball. I said your name wrong. <laughs> Meet Norm. He lives with anxiety. But with the help of this latest innovation from Be Normal, he can be normal. Just like everyone else. With the swipe of a finger, you can project happiness, confidence, machismo. Why settle for being real when you can be normal? The Normal Maker. New from Be Normal. This item doesn't really work because there's no such thing as normal. We're all different. What we like, how our brains work. In fact, one in five of us live with mental illness. Don't filter who you are. Start by talking to someone you trust. And remember, there is no normal. I just missed the shuttle. You never hit record. I never hit record. I just got an F on my exam. Is that you? Do you sit around bored all day? Do you want to watch television shows where you can look at the people and be like, I can be that. That's me. Well, you should check out LaSalle TV. That Right. We got entertainment news at Backstage Pass. We got regular news at LTV News. We got sports news at Sports Talk and Sports Line. And for those of you who really want some fun stuff, Q&A. Because down at LaSalle TV, we got a full buffet. <laughs> Thanks, LaSalle TV. Thanks, LaSalle TV. Thanks, LaSalle TV. I still miss my shuttle. Our story was begun by someone else. Our story was often shaped by generations before them. Our story was forged and maybe even defined by the experiences of our childhood. But it doesn't need to be. You can be the author. Learn how at numberstory.org. Welcome back. Here at Sportsline, we love sharing news from all LaSalle sports, including intramurals. So today we are here with intramural volleyball players, Isla and Jonathan. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Of course yeah, yes. anytime. Thank you guys. Welcome, welcome. So I have a question. So you guys are both on volleyball, intramural mm -hmm. volleyball team. How did you guys get involved with that? How did you join? Did someone recruit you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, she recruited me. And yeah. then, well, because last the rest of the story. yeah, last year we joined. We had uh, like so we're in the mask, and there was like a mask team, and I happened upon them one day, and I was like, can I please be on the team? So I joined the team, and then we became friends, and I made him join the team, and now this year we have uh, basically another mask volleyball team, and right now we're doing sand volleyball, so yeah. that's really fun. Fun. That's mm -hmm. awesome. And so walk us through your season. Do you have who do you play? And how many games do you have? When do you play? You said you're in sand volleyball right yeah. now, so obviously when it gets warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, we play uh, kind of the same couple of people yeah. uh, over and over again. There's not many people in the, the volleyball leagues right now. At least um, in the last, last semester was uh, indoor volleyball, so there wasn't that many people uh, going around. So we would play like maybe, I don't know, once a week. Is that right, mm -hmm. you think? Yeah, yeah. so we would, uh, we would play this team, uh, we would get floored, and then a week later we would come back <laughs> and play the same team and get floored again. Yeah. So that's kind of how it looked like for a while. And sometimes we would score a point, and that was always nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that leads into my next thing about like intramural, you have a bunch of people coming together, a bunch of different backgrounds, people that have volleyball experience, people that don't. What is that like for you guys, either on your team or like you said, playing against other teams that may not have been the easiest. <laughs> yeah, so our team, I think I'm the only one who has like actual experience playing volleyball, right? Ex like, extensive experience? Yes, you're, yeah, the only, you're the only person. Yeah, everyone else is playing for fun. Then there's a team 
who literally have six people who played volleyball all throughout high school. <laughs> um, they win every year, obviously. <laughs> they win every season. Um, but luckily for us, we've we've um, won the last two. We're undefeated because uh, both teams that we are supposed to ha were supposed to play forfeited. Yeah. So <laughs> we're currently undefeated. Yeah. Um, it's great. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's nice. But. Um, yeah, even, even on our team, so obviously we have uh, several teams that have varying levels of skill, but even on our team itself, we have a ton of people who have um, different levels of skill. So, you know, she's been playing volleyball for a while. I just started, so you can probably see how, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, help that needs to be going around. Mm -hmm. So it can, be, uh, it can be fun, and sometimes it's just like, oh, because uh, <laughs> the same person misses uh, a shot like six times in a row, and that person... Is me. Yep. <laughs> so. I well, you talking about kind of getting ready and, and teaching some of the new players, do you all have team practice or a designated coach? How do you improve through the season? We would love to have practice. We love it. We, <laughs> when we can, we do. Um, I, so I'm the team captain, so I kind of, and since I have some experience, I kind of would lead a practice if we did it. But it, like, if we did a practice, it would mostly be for fun. Like, we would go out on a nice Saturday and just, like, play for fun. Just And, yeah, we don't do, like, drills or anything yeah. usually, but... Just because of the nature of, like, intramural, it's, like, you know, for fun and everything. So we're not, we're not really getting anything out of it besides, like, it just being fun for us. So it can kind of be hard to uh, get, get everybody together, especially when it's really busy, mm -hmm. to, you know, go and practice, uh, get practice that we, like, desperately need. Um, so we kind of just have to rely on just being like, let's just have a good time because, you know, at the beginning of the semester when we have not that much stuff going on, we actually can go out and have fun. But when, you know, stuff starts piling on, we'll go many weeks without practice and then it can, uh, it can reflect, but, yeah. you know. <laughs> going off of that, like you said, it's all for fun. It's all like a great time. So the atmosphere, how would you describe the atmosphere of the team coming together with all these different people? Chaos yeah. is uh, one word that comes to mind. Our team is definitely extremely chaotic. Um, we're shouting all the time. I mean, like our last game, for example, we lost uh, 25 to 1. And then there's the second set, we lost 25 to 11, so we improved. But um, yeah, that whole time we're just we're having a good time shouting, cheering each yeah. other on. Someone misses and we're just like, way to be there. You yeah. <laughs> were there. Yes. We really don't have a, uh, much of a choice because that, that's kind of all we have. Because if we're not winning, um, we have to just be like, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> and it can be really brutal when, um, I remember, I think last semester, we had a crazy lead. We were actually going to win, like, genuinely for once. And we were so excited and we blew it so hard. And that, I remember I went home and I was like, I'm not doing this again. I can't do it. <laughs> so you just have to keep the spirits up mm -hmm. even when um, you blow a 24-point lead. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, that's the nature of it. And in your meal, you know, this is a D1 school, but we have a lot of people who are not athletes and yeah. so having mm -hmm. this program I'm sure is great to get out and you know get some exercise in but have exactly. fun with your friends and how do you think the intramural program has benefited you all? Uh, well like you said like exercise uh, it's hard for me to find exercise that I enjoy but definitely like being able to play volleyball which I love even if it's just once a week like it's hard to find time to exercise as well like with mask rehearsals and class and homework and work so ha having like that opportunity to just go and have fun and get some exercise is great. Yeah, I also think it benefits just from ha having people to play with. I think another challenge is just finding people who are going to want to play the same sport that you want to play. So an intramural system, like teams and everything, kind of just does that for you. You just go, oh, I want to play, and then somebody uh, schedules the game for you, and you play. You don't have to find you know, seven other of your friends if you have that many friends to play with you. So yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah, and Isla, like you said, you're the team captain. So how do you go about finding new people to play um, and filling a roster every semester? Have you kind of seen an increase or a decrease since COVID and when you've been the team captain? Um, so I actually didn't play before COVID, but I know that there's like pretty much been a mask team every year, it seems, um, at least for the past few years. This season we definitely had a, a decrease just because everyone got busier, um, but since we have like a set few people that we know will want to play, we just kind of bring them back and then if we need someone else, we just find a friend who seems athletic and would want to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything to add? No. Okay. <laughs> <Not for this laughs> one. And 
And overall, volleyball is not the only intramural sport that we have here right. at LaSalle. Have you all played any other intramural sports? And overall, how do you think that the intramural program benefits the students here? Uh, we personally haven't, like you haven't, right? But no. we had a friend who did basketball right after volleyball games, so, but. Yeah, I, I, don't, I wish I uh, kind of knew more about the intramural uh, teams just, you know, uh, years prior, because I feel like I probably would have been more inclined to go and do all that. Um, but from what I can tell, it benefits just, you know, the casual LaSalle student body just to have fun and get, um, you know, experience with one another and just have fun with one another. And that's, that's you know, all it can really ask for, I think. Yeah, and there's, there's like athletes who play soccer, you know, as their sport and then come to basketball at night. So like they have the opportunities to just do other sports for fun as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're like a student, say you said on campus, like looking to get involved, what would you recommend like the route going to be? Question. Yeah, I have some people like, so you, there's an app for it. It's I Am Leagues and Rob does it. Um, he runs it. So Rob is kind of the person you contact, Rob McIntosh. Um, and then I have people like message me through there and like request to join the team. So like there's, it, it's, I'm not going to lie, it's a little hard, but once you hear about it, there's like a pretty straightforward process and like if you couldn't figure out the app you can just email Rob and he's great about it he wants everyone to be able to do intramurals it's very like open to everyone yeah extremely inclusive if you want to yeah. play you'll play <laughs> so yeah awesome and very quickly do you all have a favorite memory while playing volleyball blowing the, the, the <laughs> 25 point lead not 25 your, points but yeah your favorite memory from yeah it? well it's my favorite memory like I, it didn't make me happy but that certainly is like the funniest thing I could think of that was brutal I was so upset I was fuming tell me my mind's also negative anytime I've fallen it's so funny it's just like because yeah. I'm used to being able to dive with knee pads on because I did it in high school mm -hmm. and now I, I just go for it and I don't have knee pads and I'm I've you know, it's fun. I don't know. <laughs> that's those are my favorite memories. Every it's time I'm like falling. Yeah. yeah it's fun, so. <laughs> well, awesome. It was great to catch up with a new intramural sport. So thank you yes. again for being here. Oh, thanks for having us. Yeah, on. thank you. And we are going to take one last break. And when we come back, we have all the upcoming games you can look forward to. Stay tuned. What are they, oh my god, I swear, these sports show hosts just get dumber and dumber as time goes on. Like, I can't believe people are actually paid money, real money, more than what I make at my job to say this stupid stuff. Like, I can't believe this crap. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna, I'm about to lose it. I'm about to lose it. Like, this is just, how can they even, like... Hey, what you doing? This stupid sports show. These, show. these people have no idea how the game of basketball is played. Not at all. Hey, you're not you when you don't watch the South TV. Here, let me show you. Have much more left, but the only reason why for everyone else, it's a one year rental. Better now. Better. You're not you when you're not watching LaSalle TV. To stay up to date, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. People join Walk MS to raise awareness and funds that change the world for everyone affected by multiple sclerosis. MS attacks the brain and spinal cord. It's the most common neurological disease leading to disability in young adults. Walk MS brings communities together, creating teams with friends, loved ones, and coworkers to rally around those we care about and end MS forever. Join us. Together we are stronger. Walk MS fundraising accelerates research breakthroughs and life-changing breakthroughs. It will take all of our passion, determination, and fundraising to end MS forever. Together, we can change the world for people with MS. Join us. Register today, start a team, and raise funds at walkms.org. Welcome back. Explorer Sports are heading into their final month of play, so here's what you can look forward to this week. 
Men's and women's rowing will travel to New Jersey to compete in the next cup, April 15th and 16th. Those same days, track and field will compete in Princeton's Larry Ellis Invite. Water polo will be back in the pool to face LIU and Villanova on April 15th. Lacrosse will face Duquesne at McCarthy Stadium on Saturday the 15th at 1 p.m. Men's golf will compete in the Abada Coca-Cola Collegiate Invitational on April 16th and 17th, while women's golf will travel to Gettysburg, PA for the Quail Valley Spring Invitational. So a lot of spring sports, pretty much all of our spring sports playing this week. Some big tournaments for golf mm -hmm. coming up. The men are going to be back at it. Um, they're coming off that second place win, playing really, really well. And this team has so much depth. They have 10 guys to choose from for their lineup this week. They only bring five. So they have qualifiers this week to figure out who is actually going to travel and hoping that they can really keep up the good streak heading into A-10 conference championships. And the women are going to travel to Gettysburg, like I mentioned, and exciting for them. This is their second event of the year and will be their last regular season event before they hop into MAC championships. So good week for golf and good week for a lot of other sports. We have lacrosse mm -hmm. who is continuing their season and hoping we can get a win there. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what lacrosse does against Duquesne. Um, Duquesne doesn't have the best record either, so maybe we can, you know, try to get in there, work together, use that individual talent, and really try to pull out a win for them. Yeah, absolutely. Cheering very hard for them. And next week, we will update you all, but it is senior night at McCarthy Stadium, so all the students should go to that. And we also have water polo, who is Wrapping up conference play, they have a matchup against Villanova who beat them um, in Kirkpool just a couple weeks ago. So a good rematch for that, hoping for a win there and another game against LIU. And track and field is back this week. They've had a really great season so far and we will have them on to talk next week to us um, a little bit about the season. Very exciting for them to continue their season. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see what everyone pulls out this weekend and update you next week. <laughs> yes, we will be back next week to tell you all about it. And that just wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to see the Explorers play, be sure to tune in to next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com. Also, check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash LaSalle TV and on Instagram at Sportsline LTV. We welcome you to send us your thoughts and suggestions there. From our entire Sportsline team, I'm Libby Gilliland. And I'm Megan Cooney. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you at the game. Good grief. Thank goodness.